I will be updating the second round of topics um, just after they finish talking, so I'm not distracting everyone with new topics to talk about. But we have five wonderful volunteers here who have about three minutes to cover off what we all talked about at each of the tables, which is a big project. And the notes will also be in the Google Doc at some point in the future, nearish future, hopefully. And Jenny. Sure. So uh, we did uh, RA for eBooks, and we had a blend of uh, people who were in the consortium and those of us who were kicked out of the uh, consortium. <laughs> I mean, independent. Um, uh, so we started with our complaints, and of course that could have gone on for a very long time. <laughs> but we, we looked at um, there were cumbersome hold lists, some titles weren't available, and patients want to know why. There's licensing issues. Um, Replicating our ebook lists with our regular book lists uh, and staff picks and book clubs, uh, not easy in Biblio Commons. Uh, some one, what Moody we heard had a downloading station, but maybe that was just kind of a browsing station, so there was a bit of confusion about that. Uh, different levels of staff training and comfort. So the more time you spend on the desk, for example, which in some libraries means uh, more technicians are on the desk more often than a lot of librarians. So the, longer, the more you're on the desk, the more ebook questions you get, uh, the more comfort that you will have in answering those questions. And so if you happen to be someone who's not, not on the desk very much, you might not have a lot of comfort um, answering some uh, very technical ebook questions, never mind recommending um, ebooks. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. So solutions. So we could have gone on for, the, for a while there. Um, so ebook help. Um, so a lot. We are doing a review in Surrey where we found that there's fewer ebook questions than we thought there was, but we're still spending you know 30 to 40 minutes uh, with somebody to get them set up. Um, if we don't have the book, but we do have the ebook, um, we would like to see lobby for change of the interface um, and get more catalog integration. We like that BPL has control of their carousel, so they can. Um, kind of promote uh, Canada Reads or Black History Month or Poetry Month. And so the consortium would like to lobby to get a similar sort of control over the, the carousel um, there. Um, we'd also like to see um, reader's advisory integration into both the catalog and the overdrive. So it would be, you did a, a search for mysteries, say you're the number one ladies detective agency. So you've got a list of results and maybe on the side you've got a, you might also like or uh, that kind of thing. And we'd like to see that in both the catalog and in uh, the overdrive um, interface. We were speculating on how we could help our power users um, because they're so self-sufficient that we hardly ever get to talk to them unless there's a technical glitch. Uh, we're looking at novelists. We heard novelists might be doing something about this. Um, and we like the idea of the human curation. So we didn't want to say to overdrive, can you recommend you know, a list of, of mysteries? We would like to have uh, some control. Um, over that, so some customizable uh, reader's advisory space. And we also wanted to, in, fi finally, uh, we wanted to integrate ebooks into staff training. So basically, if you're doing technical training for ebooks, we want to integrate reader's advisory training into that, and vice versa. If you're doing reader's advisory training, include the technical training as well. So trying to get more and more staff as comfortable as possible. We know these are shifting sands um, with ebooks, but maybe it'll get to a point where we're just tweaking as opposed to uh, major major changes. That's about it. Hi, I'm uh, Deb from West Vancouver and I am from the budgets and pricing table that corner. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm actually the only um, not or consortial library we, well, West Vancouver is the only consortial library at the table everyone else. Um, it has their own collections, although a couple of them are being like fully booted <laughs> off the legacy um, as we speak. So that was a, a theme of the conversation as well. Um, we came up with lots of questions um, and not a lot of answers because um, we're struggling with a lot of questions. I think um, we have a number of people on the table whose uh, roles involve selection. So a lot of things around selection and pricing and, and how do you choose um, you know, when titles are a certain, at a certain price point, um, how does that affect your selection activity? One thing we realized is that um, for all of the people doing selection, we're all kind of doing it by gosh and by golly, by feel in the dark, and people are beginning to develop some local practices and rules of thumb and kind of good
good ideas, but we haven't actually done the work of bringing those together into sort of a community practice. And we thought that was actually something that the BFG maybe could take some leadership on in the coming year, is to just get those good ideas, those things we're stumbling onto, those things that seem to work, and kind of share them together so that we're not all reinventing the wheel locally, as we like to do. Um, so and we talked a little bit, we just kind of went around and talked about our whole ratios, for example, and they're all different, um, and what are, you know, um, and what are we learning from even trying to live with? Six to one, 10 to one, four to one, you know, what's working, what's not, right? So that was a really interesting kind of beginning of what that conversation could look like. Um, another theme for us was pay per serve. Um, so especially Hoopla, um, Freegal to some extent as well and some of the other models out there. And so how do we deal with that model that keeps us all up at night? Because um, I think as Anita at our table said, it's like they're turning on the tap. And then basically breaking it off. <laughs> and so, you know, and, 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 and how it basically runs contrary to a lot of what we care about as librarians and making information accessible. So um, mostly just expressing concern, not really a whole lot in the way of solutions, um, except that our third theme was around advocacy um, on pricing. So Kay made another pitch for the Fair Prices for Ebooks group that Toronto and Ottawa are working on together and encouraged us all to go back to our libraries and discuss sort of becoming part of that work so we can all do that the focus is still on ebooks um, and it's that um, multimedia content I think that is really freaking us all out um, we did discuss how successful the approach has been that called and readers first have taken in actually approaching publishers and listening to them first to hear what their concerns were and then speaking to those concerns and those interests and making our point that way and how successful that's been in getting us a lot further on the ebooks path we're a little bit worried that maybe Hollywood doesn't actually have any interest in working with libraries at all, ever, for any reason. <laughs> um, so it could be a tougher sell, but um, some advocacy is, is possibly the way to go. And then we very briefly touched on um, the challenges of managing two collections. So BPL is beginning to add Biblio Digital. Quillen has 3M um, in addition to their overdrive. So how do you decide what to buy in one or the other, and, and how do you kind of manage that? And again, that might be an area where um, sharing best practices or, or lessons learned might get us going in the right direction. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, my name is Anna. I'm from North Vancouver District Public Library, and I was at the self publishing material table. And we had some great conversations and ideas. Um, we sort of started off with a lot of what we are doing, what we hope to do. And um, I feel by the end of it, we were starting to look at some really big picture things in maybe uh, working together as BC and having um, local books available to all BC libraries and how would we go about that. And that sort of means that libraries are really going to have to work together in terms of platforms. But um, back to the start of our conversation, we looked at platforms or we discussed platforms like WordPress, uh, the WordPress one. Pressbooks? Pressbooks, that's yeah. it. Uh, inline? <laughs> okay, my note's really bad. <laughs> I'm just maybe not getting the Canadian accent today. I apologize. <laughs> um, uh, we looked at um, how you uh, assist your writers to, to get from that writing stage to the publishing stage. Um, editors, do we have graphic d designers come in and help them with covers? Um, picture books, things like that. Um, we know that memoirs and fiction can be quite popular for our um, for our writers. And then there's sort of that idea of what are our guidelines around collection associated with publishing these ebooks. So, um, do we have a collection guideline? Should we have a collection guideline? And should we be notifying the public about this? Um, the also about these this ties in with searching and accessibility, and then the hosting, of course. And who holds copyrights? And making sure that the um, writers know who has the copyright, um, what's the best way to have copyright and accessibility, um, and making sure that maybe they want to get an ISBN, um, especially for cataloging. There are other platforms were Selfie from Video Board and Fast Pencil. And um, a lot of libraries are looking at connecting community members to other community members through promotion of editing courses together. 
Um, there's also talk of writing groups that do this themselves where they each share and swap their works around and edit each other's work. So um, that's for a written sort of, what am I saying, hard copy work. This is also could be applicable to the digital work that we can see. And can we work with students, student editors, um, and possibly how do we fit into book publishing? And uh, one of the best examples of a contract to look at was BiblioBoard. Um, so the contract that an author signs for published self-publishing, uh, BiblioBoard apparently is a good example. And then of course one of the other things was platforms moving across to um, our existing platforms like Overdrive. How do they integrate? Um, do they work seamlessly? Is there a charge? that comes back to us from doing that, um, things like that we have to think about. But overall, we were very positive, very engaged, and um, I think a lot of it's connecting with our community and then connecting back out to libraries, and there was a lot of dropping of hints about the co-op. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure there, guys. <laughs> so, and also, um, one of the big things too, the digital divide, um, making sure that those who want to self-publish have the ability to um, to learn how to do it through digital means and not, not just sitting away at a typewriter and thinking they can only do it through a, a hard format book. Have I, did I miss something? Excellent, great. So thanks everyone. <laughs> on some of what everybody was talking about. So some things that we talked about. Um, we started off talking about things like, you know, can libraries develop more direct relationships with publishers in future and develop our own platform or platforms uh, and try to have more control over what those platforms look like. Um, and there was some discussion of um, uh, Cult's efforts to create an ebook platform and how at least that put some pressure on the publishers as they were developing their own. Um, and yeah, lots of talk about you know what the usability would look like, having a single kind of elegant one-stop shop, which Google Commons is at the very beginning of trying to provide, I think, but could we you know potentially cut out the middleman and do that together? Um, and that led us to talking as well about like locally produced electronic content. Um, and so we talked a bit about the Inspiration Lab upstairs and the fact that that's enabling people to make their own things, whether it's self-published ebooks or videos or photos or whatever. And how can we, you know, in phase two, <laughs> sort of provide ways to get at that content and host that content and what would that look like? Is that something libraries could band together and do together? Um, and how could we also support patrons in learning about and applying um, permissions or you know, open access licenses or whatever to things that they're creating as well. Um, there was a big laugh at the, uh, the idea of just, just no DRM. The next big thing is no DRM at all. <laughs> um, there was also some conversation about like how much is the next big thing or things going to be driven by the new technology, the new hardware that continues to come out. Things like watches and implants and whatever. <laughs> um, I said it was high level. <laughs> and, uh, and how can libraries work maybe directly not just with software designers but with hardware designers as well. Um, to see how our content would fit into the, these things that are being developed. Um, there was some specific discussion of Hoopla and how great consortial <laughs> management of that would be, uh, or things like that. Uh, but we also talked a bit about if we, you know, if we have this idea of banding together and creating a platform that works for libraries, how do we balance the solidarity of that with not losing being able to tailor content and access to particular communities? Um, there was also some discussion, especially off of Anita's discussion of Safari earlier, um, about library collections as something that attracts people to a community or businesses to a community, things like Safari being used by businesses in Burnaby. Um, and is there something there? Jump in if I'm missing things that we talked about, by the way. <laughs> uh, there was also some discussion of um, what I guess we might call the erosion of some of our library values when it comes to things like not owning our e-collections and um, how do we balance that with you know what we believe we should be offering. Uh, and also some discussion of, of looking both backwards and forwards with things like boutique um, paper collections, sort of hard, hard copy collections, and can we um, 
see a future where you know someone wants to read something and they get to choose what version they want to read it in, and we're able to offer them either or, uh, and in some kind of on-demand way. Um, and even you know, sort of easing up on that distinction between paper and digital, and really it just being about the reading. And what else did we wrap up talking about? And we talked a little about preservation, especially around that piece of not owning our collections and what happens when publishers stop offering us that content. Um, and we talked a bit too about the idea of sharing collections, floating ebook collections among systems, which right now we're locked in and can't do, but maybe that's a part of the future as well. Um, did I miss things that you guys wanted to make sure that we shared? We talked about so much. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. I feel like the child in sound and music here. <laughs> Just some of the, the issues we had about getting um, getting staff oriented with getting help. So you were talking about um, trying to get staff to go to vendor support pages, even though there's varying levels of, of quality support out there, instead of getting staff to Google solutions, because it's very likely they're going to find an outdated web guide from Kentucky Public Library that <laughs> won't apply, and that kind of lines you in hot water to try to help somebody and set a date. Um, but for the most part, it was a, yeah, we talk about managing expectations. I'm um, going back to that first interaction, like just making that that ebook e support moment, like bringing that level of personalization to the interaction. Um, we might not be able to solve the problem completely, but you know, we hear you. You know, this is this, this can be a frustrating experience. I talk a little bit about trying to simplify the process. I know with a lot of older patrons. They get really concerned about, oh, there's, there's 30 steps, so I, I don't get it. And um, I got this from Mark Bodner at SQ, actually, when we do business research questions, he's always like, there's only four steps. So I'm like, okay, like we can, if you simplify it, it makes it a lot um, easier to manage. Um, for the most part, um, all the libraries, we offer different levels of support. So email support, one-to-one -one support, um, Squamish mentioned having uh, regular drop-in times for, for patrons and staff, I think. Um, Red Book programming, um, and, you, and we also talked about offering programs that are 
focus on one platform at a time, if you talk a little bit about that, as opposed to just this overarching ebooks books one-on-one -on -one kind of deal. Um, and that's kind of it. Anybody want to add anything? Can I miss anything? So what I'm going to do up here super quick, editing the PowerPoint slides, it's got all the new topics on it, so you guys can watch me make typos. Um, so budgets and pricing is going to turn in the table where we talk about statistics. Um, RA for ebooks is going to turn into accessibility. Next big thing is going to turn into device lending programs. Self-published is going to turn into privacy. And tools is going to turn into marketing. In general. Um, so redistribute yourselves and um, should, should we just go around and have everybody say exactly what the tables are? Okay. okay. <laughs>